As you already know, this past month has been consumed with the fact that there's something in the sky. Up in the sky, look, it's a plane, it's a plane, it's the balloon. Surveillance balloon. The Chinese balloon. The balloon incident. Where is this balloon? There's the balloon. The balloon was over the United States. It's still up there. Balloon, lazily drift over America. It's like seeing a robber on your front porch and inviting him in. This balloon might as well have been shaped as a middle finger. Well, good thing we didn't overreact. This is the most censored news. I'm Lee Camp. By now you know a lot about the Chinese balloon. Wednesday when President Joe Biden gave the authorization to shoot down this Chinese balloon. Well, I'm sure it couldn't take much to bring down a balloon. Maybe just a blow dart or throw a pine cone at it. The U.S. Air Force launched F-22s out of Langley, supported by F-15s from another location, as well as other aircraft such as tankers. To shoot this down, it was an F-22 that fired an AIM-9 Sidewinder missile, a single shot at the Chinese balloon that took it down. Jesus Christ! Couldn't you just tie an overweight golden retriever to the bottom of the thing? Wouldn't that do it? I mean, did you, did you have to send millions in weaponry after a balloon? By the way, most of our mainstream media covered it. You would think that it was a highly sophisticated piece of equipment able to insert Chinese brain parasites into average American citizens from the sky. But if you read closely, even the Washington Post quoted an anonymous U.S. senior defense official who said the payload wouldn't offer much in the way of surveillance that China couldn't collect through spy satellites, stating, I wouldn't characterize it as revolutionary. Wait. So it wasn't a revolutionary dastardly device capable of, 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 of impregnating American women with Chinese babies? Even the bellicose right-wing think tank, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, which is funded by the U.S. government and weapons industry and is notorious for its anti-China bias, even they called for caution early on, conceding China has not used balloons for spying before and using a balloon would be a step back. The most likely explanation is that this is an errant weather balloon that went astray. Errant balloon? W went astray? No better than hundreds of satellites China has up there? No! No! No, it is, look, it is revolutionary technology, and it was sent here by the Chinese to get us. That's what I need to believe because that's what MSNBC and Fox News told me. I leave them playing while I'm taking a deuce. But even the mainstream media, the propaganda for the U.S. state, quietly admitted the balloon had likely been pushed off course by unexpected weather conditions, according to numerous reports in major U.S. media outlets, including the Washington Post and CNN. Okay. So the U.S. government knows this balloon wasn't able to surveil much of anything and was almost definitely not intended to cross the U.S. So why did we shoot it down again? We shot it down because it uh, needed to be shot down. What? Yeah, and I punched a guy in the face because he had one. Would you like a second crack at that answer, Kamala? That balloon was not helpful, which is why we shot it down. Because it's not helpful? Neither are mosquitoes or skin lesions or Tom Arnold. We don't shoot them all with a Sidewinder missile. I mean, there's arguments to be made, but we don't do it. So if you're the U.S. government, what do you do after you've shot down a balloon with a fucking missile? You hunt down and kill all the other balloons that are out to get us. We don't yet know exactly what these three objects were. But nothing, nothing right now suggests they were related to China's spy balloon program or that they were surveillance vehicles from other, any other country. So we know they weren't connected to China or any other surveillance program, but we got them! USA! US... Uh, right? I don't, I don't really know what's, what's happening right now. Now we have evidence one of the objects shot down was a bottle cap balloon released by an Illinois hobby club. NORAD is saying the FBI has spoken with the hobby club and expects the National Security Council to have more on potentially identifying the objects. NORAD and the FBI tackling the scourge of tweens launching hobby balloons? How much exactly does it cost for the U.S. military to shoot down an 11-year-old's party gift? 
The Air Force used two AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles in the attack, which cost more than $440,000 each and are manufactured by the arms corporation Raytheon. Researcher Steven Simler estimated that the Pentagon spent around $2 million in this operation to shoot down the hobbyist balloon over Lake Huron. $2 million to kill a balloon that apparently cost roughly $12 to purchase? Da! I have no joke for that. Just da! Be the best you can be. Join the U.S. military when you get back home and tell the local girls you're keeping them safe from balloons. Well, let's just say it'll put a lot of backs on mattresses. So if we're now in the habit of shooting down every little balloon in the sky, I hope there aren't any others. Over 1,500,000 balloons going up in the air at this very, very moment. Look at the cloud below. It's completely covering the terminal tower. Oh, look at that! Oh, dear God! I think we're gonna need a few more missiles. So as you know, the United States is strong. We are tough. Nothing can phase us, unless it's a kid's birthday party favor, all right? That gets under our skin. Just wait until an army of piñatas marches over the horizon. Everybody get a golf club! Swing in unison! In unison! There's a lot of other things that have also scared the shit out of the big, tough United States in recent years. In the case of the Russiagate narrative, a meme on Facebook made us poop ourselves. Well, that along with a bot army. It was an army of Russian bots, and there was no way to stop them, except the fact that they didn't, eh, technically speaking, exist. Just recently, we saw the internal emails of Twitter execs in which they said the Russian bot narrative should be called out as the bullshit it is. They didn't call it out because they're cowards, but behind the scenes, they knew it was bullshit. Or in the case of Cuba, there was a sound that we thought might be out to get us. As you probably remember, a few years ago, the US government and the mainstream media created an all-American hysteria when they said US embassy employees in Cuba were possibly subject to an acoustic attack. That's right, a sound gun. And while sound experts were saying such a device was not, you know, physically possible in the physics of the thing, it kept growing anyway. They told us more diplomats were hit than earlier reported. Oh dear Lord, the country that still has 1950s cars all over the roads clearly has a sonic weapon so sophisticated it's beyond anything we think is scientifically possible. Maybe they made it out of a 1950s Chevy fan belt. Next, the illnesses forced us to evacuate our diplomats. Run for it, there's a sound behind me. But it didn't stop there. Big, tough America was not done being chased around by noises. Next, we expelled Cuba's diplomats. Get the fuck out of here with your sound games. Then scientists studied an audio recording of the sound weapon and found out it was crickets. It was literally a recording of crickets. That's, uh, that's humiliating. That's, that's like being chased out of a country by ladybugs. Nay, the sound of ladybugs. But still, that wasn't enough to stop the hysteria. We just shifted the panic to something new. The New York Times said, it's a microwave weapon. That's it. And the hysteria kept escalating until it became time to shoot the Cuban embassy in Washington, D.C. The building. Maybe shooting the building will make us feel safer. A man literally opened fire on the Cuban embassy in Washington, D.C. with an assault rifle. That ought to teach those dastardly Cubans always making sounds and stuff and things. Yeah. I think this story could literally be in the dictionary next to the word hysteria. And then finally, after years of this utterly false garbage, even the CIA said that Havana syndrome was not the result of a sustained campaign by a hostile power. Even the king of propaganda, the New York Times, had to admit it. But I gotta say, I respect and love 
that our corporate media keep all their incredibly false articles up online so that you can check them out right now and see how stupid they look. It's like time traveling through a museum of idiocy. It's really wonderful. But you see, rather than being the tough, strong country we claim to be, the United States is uniquely suited for totally ridiculous hysteria on the level of that guy who created Coney 2012 and then ran around town naked masturbating on parked cars. If only he'd had the American flag painted on his ass cheeks, he'd be a hero. The U.S. has an aggressive 24-7 media cycle that feeds off the fear of us, the viewers. But at the same time, that media won't actually tell Americans to fear most of the things that we should fear, like corporate destruction or the climate crisis, which the mainstream media still covers far less than something like a scary balloon. And even if this Chinese balloon had been a special spy balloon. We can't claim we don't spy way more on China. Besides satellites, the U.S. has dozens and dozens of military bases surrounding their country. Is China surrounding the United States? Do they have loads of military bases in Mexico and China? No! In fact, they only have one, one military base outside of China in the whole world. It's in Djibouti. So everybody keep an eye out for Djiboutins. They're up to something. For the ruling elite, having you fear other countries is good. It's useful. It keeps people in line, willing to sacrifice their privacy and freedom. Hell, because of the shadows on the wall, we're willing to sacrifice our health care, our water, our bridges. I mean, seeing as we're throwing trillions into the military, but claim there's no money for tap water that doesn't smoke as it comes out of the sink, the burning means it's working. But fear of the big bad wolf does something else for the oligarchs as well. It keeps the citizenry distracted from the real problems, such as the destruction of our lives by the ruling class. Stop falling for it. That's the most censored news for this week. Please make sure you check out all of our other episodes. They're all at youtube.com slash behind the headlines. Click on the subscribe, click the notify button. Also, we are completely independently funded, okay? If you want to see this show keep going, it's going to come down to you guys. I hope you'll join up at patreon.com slash behind the headlines. You get all kinds of extra content, such as the blooper reels, which I'm not really happy that they created or put out, but they're there and they're a good time. Uh, but yeah, you get extra content, plus you're supporting independent, fully independent media. So thank you for doing that. And I will see you next week. Keep fighting.